Good morning and thank you for joining us for a look at the headlines from the papers. We call the program of the press. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I'm joined by security expert Dixon Osage. Thank you very much for joining us. Nice being here. All right, we'll be joined a little later by financial expert Jide Ojo. Uh, let's start things off with the Punch newspaper this morning. The big one here is NCDC cries out as rapid test kits black market rises. I'll take that again. NCDC cries out as rapid test kits black market rises. FG to use hotels, schools as quarantine, isolation centers. Hospitals refusal to treat patients leads to more debt that's coming from the federal government. Uh, there are other headlines here just above the masthead. We have Buhari Rides National Assembly, six $5.5 billion fresh loan. 18 groups jostle to monitor $311 million of battle spending. Uh, that's uh, an interesting one uh, for a lot of persons. 18 groups, some are even saying more. Um, FG, Obasanjo, Fault US over additional fresh probe. And then just above it, we have CBN forecasts lower growth, reduces lending rate to 12.5%. you find details of that story on page 38 of the paper. Uh, because of time, I'll just go ahead and bring in our guest. Uh, Dixing, which of these headlines? Um, let's not ignore the screamer, though. <laughs> the screamer of NC NDC um, raising, um, crying out over the rapid test kits, a black market rise. Well, I, 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 really, I really was surprised uh, because all the billions uh, we've gotten from Nigerians, I don't know where the, uh, those money are right now because uh, I don't think uh, the SDAC uh, should be crying out for, for, for test kits because what they should have done is to be uh, proactive and proactive, you know. They should have predicted the future and created the future because when you, pre when you, when you are proactive, you are creating the future. And creating the future is putting a methodology in place to ensure that uh, you don't fall vulnerable into any uh, uh, negative uh, uh, dimensions. Uh, because uh, the COVID-19 came uh, as a shock to the world and um, every country is expected to uh, you know, activate its emergency uh, planning. And what we talk about emergency planning is the suspension of human rights. So when you're about suspending human rights due to this uh, COVID-19, I uh, expected the NCDC to have uh, pre 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 predicted the future uh, in, in the sense that uh, every uh, financial obligations, every uh, application should have been in place. Uh, because for them to have crying out now is to tell us that uh, they are like, like a classical in their area of duties. Now, okay, the government is going to use hotels and all of those places. Are you concerned that the conversion uh, will work? Uh, it's be is it better than the suggestion that we should, uh, you know, do self-isolate at home? Well, uh, uh, COVID-19 is a biological weapon, and uh, I don't think uh, taking uh, hotels and uh, other places into uh, the conversion for this uh, uh, program is very essential. I don't think it's essential because the reason why I say so is that uh, the hotel is an hospitality industry and in hospitality industry people tend to go and uh, have fun, uh, take, take some rest and you know go on holiday with their families. And in a situation whereby you expose the hospitality industry to a state of uh, vulnerability because it's going to be a high risk now because nobody can tell uh, the, or ascertain the level in which uh, the fumigation uh, processes uh, will be effective. effective. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, uh, get um, a financial expert, Jide Ojo, in. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure. All right. I, I want to take your thoughts quickly on the uh, money being requested by Buhari. Um, he's asking the National Assembly for an additional $5.5 billion loan. That's a huge amount of money. Uh, what's your take on it? I'm really shocked to the marrow uh, that the president will request for additional um, loan approval shortly after the 22.7 billion that was approved uh, by the National Assembly not long ago. Uh, don't also forget that IMF just also approved a loan for Nigeria, and we just received the 300 over $300 million about Chalut. Yeah, granted the fact that there is a sharp decrease in the oil revenue, I, I am of the opinion, I'm of the considered view that the president could have at least tried to look inward 
In terms of blockages of revenue leakage, pruning down uh, running cost, and um, uh, don't also forget that uh, it, with effect from about February this year, the VAT has, has been increased uh, from the initial 5% to 7.5%. And um, at some point this year too, the, the price of crude was selling well above the benchmark uh, that was approved in the budget. And for, for your information, the president has also reduced substantially the, the size of the budget. So all of this considered, I don't think we should uh, indulge in on, uh, on due borrowing. But more, more shocking to me is the fact that there was even no breakdown released to the public as to what specifically this $5.513 billion will be used for. If we do know, at least for Abachalu, they told us they are doing uh, Second Niger Bridge, they are doing... Um, they are doing Lagos about the expressway and the Abuja Kano expressway. So we will be able to monitor that. And that's why you see 18 civil society organizations wanting to be part of the monitoring exercise. But in a situation where you are just asking for a blanket $5.513 billion uh, from multilateral organizations like IMF, uh, World Bank, um, uh, Islamic Bank, uh, as well as uh, a couple of other organizations. Without details being released to the public, leaves room for, you know, doubt. And I, I think the president should reconsider that position. Okay, quickly before I let you uh, go now, um, do you have any concerns um, about the sources from which this um, loan is being sourced? Well, like I said, uh, what was in the public domain is that they are getting... A portion, a portion of it from the World Bank, from IMF, from uh, Islamic Bank, from African Development Bank, and a couple of other sources. The bottom line is that we are not told exactly what are the terms and conditions of these loans. Will it be single interest rate? Will it, what will be the moratorium uh, before the repayment will be due? And we are already borrowing too much. Under this current administration, our budget, our our borrowing has more or less quadrupled from the position it was as of 2015. Are we saying we have not been making money? I think we can and we should look inward, block leakages in the system rather than going and borrowing. I have advised in other platform that there are a lot of white elephants that are spread all over this country. They can be sold off and the priority projects the process from such white elephants cannot be applied to completing those priority projects that will uh, serve the benefit of Nigerians. But right now, uh, going to IMF, World Bank, and all of that, and I, I asked myself, when I saw IMF as part of the organization that they intend to borrow this $5.513 uh, $5 billion, uh, was it with a retroactive effect, because I really do know that a couple of weeks back, IMF actually approved a loan for Nigeria. I can't, on uh, top of my head, remember exactly how much. But we read in the papers that uh, IMF has approved a loan for Nigeria. So is it a fresh loan from IMF, or is, it, is that what is now being pushed uh, retroactively for uh, approval by the National Assembly? And right. um, I, 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 I shiver because it will be interesting to know exactly what these projects are for. All so right, uh, Jide Ojo, um, I'm afraid uh, we're time constrained. I'll have to say thank you very much uh, for giving us an insight um, on that particular issue. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me and stay safe. You too, sir. You too. Uh, we get back to uh, Dixing in the studio now. Your quick reaction to his submission before uh, we take a look at the Nation uh, newspaper. Well, uh, it's really, really worrisome because uh, Abacha Lutz, uh, we had uh, about 300 and something million was uh, refunded back to Nigeria. Uh, the, tr the truth is that we, we don't have a, a, a mechanism in place to track our record and also uh, to uh, audit our spendings and ensure that loopholes are 
are verified, you know, and that's why we, uh, we need to have more forensic uh, experts in, in Nigeria, you know, to analyze what is really going wrong. Because here in our own client, in our own country, uh, we don't believe in the uh, success of this great nation. Uh, if you look at the phrase in the national item, which states that uh, the labor of our heroes past should not be in vain, uh, which I believe our people thinks every day. Uh, I expected our, our country to ensure our labor, the, the labors of our heroes past uh, are not in vain because all this money that are coming to Nigeria, there's no accountability and we, are keep, uh, we, we kept borrowing. I think we are putting Nigeria in the deadlights. All right, uh, let's take a look at the nation newspaper and see uh, what we can do with it in the time available. Uh, federal government, many Nigerians dying of common ailments. Uh, that's the nation newspaper. It has um, some riders to it. Uh, has hospitals reject patients for fear of COVID-19. NAVDAG, others get Madagascar cured drug. Um, we also have uh, a breakdown of the figures globally as it stands. Uh, the, it's, you know going up to about 6 million um, infections uh, globally. Above the masthead, we have new chiefs for Edo, Ondo, as please gets new structure. Interest rates down to 12.5% from 13.5%. Uh, a little bit of sports is also on the front page. Uh, but let's uh, talk about the people dying from common ailment. Are we, uh, there are people that are saying we're beginning to um, disregard every other aspect um, of life because of this pandemic. Is that true? Are we uh, causing more harm than good with the concentration uh, on the pandemic? You see, until we realize and uh, understand that uh, human lives are irreplaceable, uh, we will uh, not get things right. Because uh, the value for human rights in Nigeria here is highly dissipated. Uh, because uh, human life matters. Uh, if you go to some advanced world, uh, uh, when you bring down a citizen, the nation will go after you. Uh, but here, uh, you see people killed with immunity. Uh, people uh, carry out actions that, that are detrimental to the Nigerian state with immunity. Uh, for me, this strange ailment that are killing Nigerians, I think uh, it should be uh, investigated. And uh, uh, we, should, we will be expecting a report from the, uh, uh, the investigation team. But I want to also put it on notice uh, that here in our country, uh, we don't usually carry out a conclusive investigation. You know, when incidents springs up or sprangs up, we just, uh, everybody will start shouting, but we don't have a conclusive end. But I believe we should go have a conclusive end on this one. Oh, I, I want to take it all on the <coughs> AFDB uh, issue. There is a headline here, Buhari Obasanjo. AFDB board back Adeshina. I want you to take on all of this. Um, our government and the management of the bank is saying that due process was followed in the investigation. Uh, they have an internal structure for doing this and that the call by the U.S. Um, is um, unnecessary and out of place. What's your reaction? Yeah, when it comes to financing and monetary values, there are always conflict of interest. And conflict of interest uh, could come from a various form, you know, it could come from an outside source or from an inside source, you know. Uh, perhaps maybe someone is trying to, you know, get on that seat. Uh, but for me, uh, Buhari and uh, Abbas and Joe back in the uh, man is a good one because our citizens, you know, because uh, reputation matters. And that is why image management is very important because whatever goes wrong is going to affect its image till eternity. So I believe image management is important and uh, everything should be clarified. All right, let's jump to uh, the Nigerian <coughs> Tribune. Buhari seeks approval uh, for $5.513 billion loan. Uh, we've um, spoken with um, financial expert Jide Ojo on that. Um, so we'll just uh, move on to the others. Buhari creates additional police zonal commands, or your own do, Oshun. Others get new CPs. And then uh, 15 die in Bochi Kenu accident. That's a sad one on the front page of the paper. Um, 74 feared killed as bandits attacked Sokoto uh, community. Also there, 21 years of civil rule, gains, pains, prospects, economy, many miles crossed, many miles lie ahead. All right, um, let's uh, take your thoughts quickly. As uh, a security expert, what's your concern about the increasing cases we seem to be having in spite of the pandemic? We're having people being kidnapped. We have communities um, fighting and killing uh, themselves. Yeah, our system of policing is very, very erroneous. 
Uh, uh, when Sir Robert Peace uh, founded the Nigerian police, uh, uh, in, uh, sorry, Nigerian police, the modern day policing uh, uh, in the United Kingdom in 1821, uh, he, he made a phrase that uh, the absence of crime proves the effectiveness of the policing system. Uh, now, are there absence of crime in Nigeria? No. Uh, we losing the more Nigerians every day. Yes, we are. Uh, for me, I, I think uh, the Nigerian government should take human life as a top priority because if you don't prioritize your risk, you cannot be able to apply, apply your uh, 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 countermeasures. Uh, because when you go into risk priority, Human life comes first, you know. Uh, information comes second. Image comes third. Property even comes last in the priority of risk uh, because property are replaceable. But your image is not replaceable because uh, when your image is damp, is damp, and life is not replaceable. So that is why when you prioritize your risk, you'll be able to adopt or apply uh, proper security applications and measures. Now, going into the uh, the uh, 12 zone, uh, the zones uh, being created, that is not going to solve the issue. What's going to solve the issue is effective policing, you know. And uh, when you talk about effective policing, we're also going to look into uh, territorial behavior. And uh, if our policing system will adopt territorial behavior, uh, holding, uh, holding into account our territory, not allowing the enemy to break into our space, uh, giving enough of defensive space. Uh, we'll talk about defensive space. It's a situation whereby you and I uh, will leave, move around without being scared, you know. Then the Nigerian policing system will be a better place because human priority has to come first. Thank you so much. I wish we had more time for you. your thoughts on uh, you. the headlines this thank morning. Thank you. Nice being here. Thank you. Right, and we thank you for watching the program. More stories and information here on Plus TV Africa. Do stay tuned and be safe.